Hi, welcome back to the Count to 10 podcast. My name is Simon Sanborn. I'm a behavior teacher and I started this podcast to kind of give back to my teachers and co-workers, uh, students, parents, you name it, to kind of focus on behaviors and then within understanding behaviors also figuring out how we communicate with each other, how best to do that. Um, is there, is there uh, tools and things that we can learn and, and get to use that would allow us to be better communicators and find ways to um, connect? So that's the main part of this this podcast. I didn't do one last week because last week was crazy. Um, I had two sons graduate from high school, um, and that was the 29th of May. And then uh, that afternoon, I had a graduation party for one son, and then the whole rest of the week to plan for the next party for the other son for the following Sunday. So. I think when I look back on it, uh, the stress I was feeling when it came to like the last week of school was a, a building of a lot of things that I was really fearful of. And kind of reflecting with you about that, I don't think anything really prepares you for that transition. You know, as a behavior teacher and somebody who knows a lot about understanding how people connect and understand each other and communicate, I was just doing a terrible job. I was so in my head, uh, trying to figure out so many things. Uh, I forgot about the team around me, uh, meaning my wife and my other kids and the family that was here to help. And I didn't give myself an opportunity to see all those things around me because I was kind of so wrapped up in my own head. And you know, those of you who know this podcast or listen to it um, weekly, will know that I talk a lot about meditation and, and finding ways to keep your mind clear and be in the moment. That way you can understand your own thoughts and feelings better. I didn't do that. It was a pretty long week of uh, a lot of thinking <laughs> and a lot of, and, uh, and a lack of communication, let's just put it that way. So the stress was pretty high. I wanna say the Saturday before graduation, um, I think I meditated like five times and I usually do 10 minute sessions. So 50 minutes of meditation throughout the day uh, didn't prepare me very well. But the strange thing is, is that as, as upset and concerned I was, when Sunday rolled around for graduation, I just felt wonderful. I felt good, I felt accomplished. I was proud of, of our boys. I was excited about seeing people and spending time with people and celebrating what they've achieved. And I just thought I really wish I could get myself out of the way sooner than that. I probably could have, probably could have. I would have enjoyed the last week of school probably more. I would have done a better job probably with my students and my associates and my co-teachers um, if I'd just been more present. So as somebody you know who feels like they know a lot about this kind of stuff and has a lot of tools in the toolbox and ways of coping and understanding uh, why I feel a certain way or why others may feel a certain ways um, in some tough moments I couldn't handle it very well. So it's good for me to reflect on that because one, um, you know, I need to be more gentle and understanding with myself when things don't go the way I want it to or I think I should be behaving a certain way or should be doing something away and it's not correct. Um, you know, like my therapist said, there's no such thing as you should do something. Um, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda, is what my, my wife and I say. Um, I just needed to be more present and, and really have taken in what was happening. And really, uh, you know, I celebrated it later, but it would have been a lot less agonizing if I had recognized it sooner. Um, and then when I uh, get that kind of crazy in my head, um, I shut down pretty good. So uh, it's a wall that kind of pops up that makes it seem that I'm upset or angry or frustrated because I'm not speaking very much. So I'm pretty quiet, get very stoic, uh, want to spend a lot of time alone, and that's not very productive <laughs> in relationships with your spouse or your kids or your family uh, or your friends, coworkers. Yeah, it does not work very well. So um, I'm just here to tell you that in the you know in those worst times, it's it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. You're going to have moments where you bump into it. My hope is that I can just continue to learn. You know, I hope that the next stressful situation that happens because they're, they're coming, they're lining up. You know, what can you do about life um, that happens to you? You know, but 
I think understanding myself better and trying to figure out what went wrong or what I could do differently next time. Um, who could I reach out to? Who could I speak to? Um, you know, my therapist told my wife, don't, you know, let, remind Cy that if he needs to, he can always call and we can chat. And at the time I thought, well, that's great. But then I just let it go when I moved on with my own thoughts and my own stresses. So, and to, to kind of wrap that up, you know, I can't thank my family enough for being here. I can't thank my wife enough for being, you know, a solid uh, part of my life that I can rely on. And, you know, I think it all comes down to fear. That's kind of what I reasoned out over time after more meditation and more journaling and writing uh, and discussions with my wife. It's pretty much just fear. You know, these kids are walking out of this house and they're starting their, their own lives and anything could happen to them. And that is really scary, really scary. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, pieces in there too about the fear of, have I done enough? You know, have I prepared them enough? Do they, you know, do they know when they're on the wrong side of town and what to do if they're in a bad situation? Um, Cause I definitely found myself on the wrong sides of town and gotten out of sticky situations, but um, I wasn't quite as sheltered as they were. So, um, it, it, it's, you know, letting that fear kind of run things, you can understand where the behaviors are coming from, right? So that stoicism, that, uh, quietness, that, you know, it wasn't self-reflection. It wasn't, um, uh, you know, coming to terms with things. It was just fear and agony kind of. And that's not a very comfortable place to be in, and I don't have to be in that place. It's okay to recognize it when it's happening, but I've got to be able to pull myself out of situations like that. So I'm just going to try to keep getting better and try to let the fear subside and know that uh, I don't have control over that stuff. And that's really a difficult thing for me to handle, but uh, I think I'm getting there. So I hope you have and are having a wonderful summer. Um, I just now feel like I'm settling down. This is the first a uh, real week without anything happening, you know, with graduation and stuff. So it's been kind of nice to sit back and relax. We're all making adjustments being home and um, all being together all the time. Kind of reminds me of uh, when we were on lockdown for COVID, you're all stuck together. Not that we're stuck together, but you know, you find yourself all in the same space very often, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, but it does take a little getting used to when you're used to going to work every day or my wife's home. Uh, and not having anybody around all day long because we're all at school and she has the house to herself and she's got to make adjustments. So it's always a fun, uh, a fun little thing to go through. But um, my, you know, I, I just want you to make sure that you're taking time for yourself. I think I said that in my last email uh, to all the teachers that I work with. We've got to take time to find those spaces. And I, I wish I had done a better job of that before so that I could have enjoyed um, my time better. You know, I, like I said, I really enjoyed graduation. Um, the parties were wonderful, uh, but leading up to it and a couple days in between, it was pretty tough. So I just want to be able to recognize when my fear got the best of me, uh, what can I do differently next time, change it up. And not just for me, but for the people that surround me. You know, it's not just about me all the time. It's about, you know, how I'm interacting with others. And I don't want the people that I love and care about the most to feel ostracized or, or not part of things or, you know, left out, that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to try to do a lot of reflection this summer. I'm going to do a lot of writing this summer. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I'm starting a web page uh, for coaching and um, uh, kind of understand, still kind of understanding behaviors and kind of a landing spot for the podcast as well. Uh, I'm just going to try to get this podcast also into audio form for uh, Spotify and Apple and Google podcast, things like that. So some fun kind of things planned. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then I also uh, found out that I'm going to be, um, I was uh, accepted into Mount Mercy University's marriage and family counseling program. So it'll be a pretty intense two years, but I think, I think I'm pretty sure that I think being a therapist is where I want to go. So that doesn't mean I'm going to stop teaching because I love teaching too. But um, education is really important to me. So I'll always be part of education uh, or being an educator in some way. Um, but I'm going to be going back to school. So I'm excited about that. Uh, working really hard on not being nervous because uh, college is hard for me. And um, with my ADHD and things like that, it can, be, it can be pretty tough. So my hope is that since I have some of those things under control, um, it'll be a, a bumpy but fun ride. And like my wife says, you can do anything for two years. 
So uh, we'll uh, have the house less full. People should be quieter. I should be able to find more times to uh, do the things I need to do to be successful in that program. So I'm excited about that. So some some, f- some fun summer stuff happening. And as those things come online, like the podcast or the webpage and things like that, I'll let you know. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you very much for cutting out a little gap in your day to listen to me talk about things. Um, and part of it is just me... I hope when you hear me talk about some of the things I struggle with that you recognize yourself and being a human being and the things that you struggle with and that we're all in this together and nobody has it all figured out, nor will we ever have it figured out, but we can make the journey a little less um, anxious and, and tough if we can try. So thanks again for your time. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a good one.